The extension block splint, or Burke halter, is used to immobilize proximal phalanx fractures. In this presentation, the application of the extension block splint will be demonstrated. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the correction of the rotational deformities, the initial displacement and reduction, and the application of the extension block splint. The extension block splint is indicated for proximal phalanx fractures and middle phalanx fractures. This image shows fractures of the third and fourth phalanges with typical volar angulation, which will be corrected by splinting the MP joints to 90 degrees and the rest of the finger splinted straight. Now fractures of the proximal phalanx of the index finger are shown, again with volar angulation. This is the way an extension block splint should be applied to allow early mobilization of the fingers. This is a well-applied extension block splint. Malrotation is illustrated here. In both the gutter splint and extension block splint, buddy splinting is important to prevent such malrotation of the fingers. To apply the extension block splint, the following materials are needed. Cotton wool, used for undercast padding. Surgical tape, which is used for buddy splinting. Scissors. Plaster slabs that are generally five layers thick and are available in differing widths. A crepe bandage to secure the plaster slabs. And water, or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated next to a table or trolley with the elbow at the edge of the table to allow full access to the forearm and wrist. To begin, the patient's hand is examined for rotation of the metacarpals to correct any rotation or prevent the introduction of any rotational deformities, the second and third fingers are buddy splinted together. A piece of gauze or cotton wool is placed between the fingers and they're taped together. The material will prevent skin maceration from skin-on-skin -skin contact. With rotational deformity, the direction of both fingernails must be the same. The fingers should lie side by side in the same plane. The cotton wool is used for undercast padding. A slit is cut in the cotton wool for the first web space. The cotton wool is gently wound on towards the elbow with an overlap of 50%, which creates a double layer of padding. The proximal border of the extension block splint is about two fingers below the crease of the elbow. The cotton wool extends slightly beyond the planned edge of the slab to provide a soft edge. Two strips of cotton wool are placed over the fingers. In cases of a proximal phalanx fracture, there will always be volar angulation present. This volar angulation can be corrected by fully flexing the MP joint to 90 degrees. Additional volar pressure will result in the reduction of the fracture. The plaster must be applied in two stages. The application and hardening of the volar slab and the application of the dorsal slab, or the desired correction, will not be obtained. The slab is cut to length. The slab is wettened by pulling it through the water. The excess water is removed. The slab is applied. 
The length of the slab is determined using the distal palmar crease as a landmark. A notch is pre-cut to allow for the thumb. The slab is secured in place by winding a crepe bandage around the forearm and wrist. The slab is molded with the wrist in extension. Both hands are wrapped around the patient's wrist, with the thumbs applying pressure to the palm of the hand until the slab has set. The second slab is wettened. The slab is applied. At the distal end, the MP joint must be splinted to a flexion of 90 degrees to prevent stiffness. The splint should be well molded to maintain the reduction with support under the metacarpal head. Dorsal molding will correct any dorsal angulation. The second slab is secured in place with a crepe bandage. The bandage is wrapped around the forearm should pass through the first web space around the fingers to be secured around the wrist and then around the forearm additional molding is applied by placing the thumb into the palm of the hand the fingers around the wrist and applying pressure to keep the wrist in extension. With the second hand, pressure is applied to the MP joints. This pressure must place the joints into a full flexion of 90 degrees. The pressure is maintained until the plaster has set. However, the plaster will not achieve full strength for 36 hours. The excess crepe bandage must be cut away to allow flexion of the fingers. The application of the extension block splint is now complete. The exercises for the patient may now be explained and demonstrated. The reduction may be verified with an x-ray. The splint should be removed after a maximum of three weeks in order to prevent stiffness.